As a judge, I'm judging your MCing right now, and this weakness is giving, getting a low score. So you're in charge, AJ. That's what that means. You're the MC, dude. You figure it out. I'm the judge. I'm the talent. I show up with an ice cream sandwich, two minutes late, and I sit over there and I make fun of people after they do things. That's all I do. This is your job. This is why Carla wants to be a judge. Find a third. All right. Who do you want? Who, who do we want? Who do we want? Constance, do you want to judge? You're too nice to judge. One nice judge is good. Okay. All right, everybody. I think we're just going to have Constance fill in for Carla. All right, so my name's AJ Olding. For those of you that don't know me, uh, I lived here for four years, moved away to Ohio. Uh, I know, right? Boo if you want. Uh, Carla, oh, I'm sorry. Grow, is Ohio a place? Ohio physically exists, but states are imaginary figmentations of violent men's minds, so no. Um, all right, so without further ado, let's bring up our judges. Jeremy walked off again. Well, we'll start with Jeremy, wherever he is. What? Where, where, where does Jeremy? He's buying beer. All right, we'll start with Aria. Well-known member of LRN, one of the Crypto Six. Aria, ladies and gentlemen. In the interest of fairness, I should warn you, I can be bribed. Uh, Angry Orchard in particular, good bribe. Second, uh, filling in for Carla, because she's not here, um, we're going to have Constance Spencer. Constance is going to be running Porkfest next year, I'm told. So if there's anything you guys want to see at Porkfest, let her know on the way out. What is the fan for? How does a volunteer for the fan work? Is it like wave it around like this? They find an outlet, they plug it in, and they direct it at the pavilion. Anybody got that? I literally bought these Hands in Manchester and they've been in here all week. Anyone want to do it? All right, we'll be hot. I'm hot. That is a lot of steps for this late on a Saturday night, Constance. All right, our third and final judge is Jeremy Kaufman, the ultimate troll of Twitter. He ran for U.S. Senate last year. He ran a great campaign where he tried to become a lizard person. And I think we're all very proud of him. So, for those of you that are unaware, this is a safe space of sorts. My drink is whiskey. But like a real safe space, not like one of those ones on liberal college campuses. And by that I mean you can say whatever you want in here. I'm Tough shit, Sean. Um, if there is a camera, it is on in the back. Um, if any of our ranters choose not to be recorded, um, we're going to ask for that, for that camera to be turned off. And I would ask that the same be done for anyone who is in the audience for those particular ranters. Many of us work nine to fives. We don't need things getting on the internet. <laughs> and that ends, that is my spiel to, to start that off. Now the format of this is going to be, it's gonna be four minutes long for each ranter. Carla's here, uh-oh. You're in trouble. Man, I would hate to be you right now. Just keep going, just keep going. Just, she We're just going to keep going, because Carla's still not actually here. She's going to the bathroom. So, 
Randers are going to come up. It's going to be four minutes long. At the end of that four minutes, our three judges are going to give a score. Typically, it's out of five, but I think we want to do it out of ten this year because you guys continue to give fives, I think, way too No, we always do it out of ten. It should be out of okay. 20. This is Pork Fest 20. Let's out of 20? Oh, it's, it's Pork Fest 20. 20. Can I get any, any, any other numbers? Are, just, just, yeah, any other numbers that people just like? I mean, what do we want to do? 20 yeah, is too much math, man. Wow. Yeah, but we're not a democracy. Can I get matter. any irrational numbers or some fractions? Like, let's see some creativity. I'm with <laughs> All right, we'll do 20. We'll do 20. We'll do 20. All right, Jeremy, I need you to clean it up here for a minute. We're going out of 20. And I do that for you, by the way. Did you know that? That I actually do that? That's that I I keep track of that for you. Did you know that? Oh, AJ? you keep track of the score. I do that. For I did you. not know that. Yeah. I was put in charge of this like six hours ago. Give him more beer. It's not like the score matters anyway. So. The scores don't matter. The four minutes, though, that matters. That matters. That matters. If you, you will go, get tackled, you'll get JFK'd, okay? If like, you go off. <laughs> hey, he was out on time. If you go over, I'm going to deduct you some points, or maybe Jeremy's going to put it on his score sheet since he's keeping track of the score. Um, no, Jeremy can be in charge of the subtractions. Four minutes. Um, I'll keep track of the four minutes. I'll be off to the side. I'll put my hand up when you've got a minute left, and I'll kind of wave a little bit when you've got about 30 seconds left. Go over at your, own ex at your own cost. I think Jeremy will be very mean about it. First up is going to be Justin O'Donnell. Please welcome him to the stage. How's it going, with Fork Fest? Pork Fest? You guys ready for Fork Box Idol? No more second-class citizen rants because we're not fucking celebritarians who couldn't get invited to Dennis Pratt's personal list of who he wanted to hear rant because that's not what ranting's about. And Soapbox has lost its heart and soul over the years, in my opinion, because it's no longer about standing up here, delivering a message that inspires and drives people and showing your passion. It's about people doing slam poetry, reading essays, or debating a point they've rehearsed for 18 months to try and score points with the judges. If you're doing soapbox for the points, you've already lost the main point that matter. Yeah. It's about your passion, not your win. And I'm sick and tired of the victories going not to those who inspire the most, but to those whose mothers wrote their essays and they read it out loud. <laughs> wow, everyone's surprised that Justin O'Donnell has a problem with something. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Carla Garrick is inviting herself to be our fourth judge. Well, so it's now out of a total of 80. Carla, we're doing points, we're doing up to 20 points now because it's Pork Fest 20. Right. Oh. So now we're, we've got four and 20. Got it, yes. perfect. Maybe they're to help people get up, I don't know. So, all right. So I, I will, as the fact checker, let you know, Justin, that this hateful judge does not let children's written speeches, and I got booed last year for marking that kid down. And I love children working, okay? So, uh, so just, and the, so I think you've gotta start with the audience. The root problem is always democracy, okay? Uh, uh, so, you know, that's where you've gotta point the finger. Uh, and uh, so what, I've gotta give a number? I do not have a number at all. 20? I don't, I'm not, who calculates things on that scale? I don't know. Uh, uh, it's the number you would just pick. Uh, fort, uh, fort, uh, 11, we gotta start lower. Oh, 11, I don't know, if you start it, if you start, what's the point? Where do you go from there? Someone's gonna do better. If no one does better, then 11 will win. Yeah, Justin doesn't care. You know what, Justin, you get a zero, I think, to prove the point. I mean, Jeremy, I, I think winning doesn't matter a whole lot to him, so. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm seriously, yeah. that's actually my score. All right, Constance, what are your thoughts? 
Oh, oh, oh. Um, so there's this very awkward thing going on where I have no idea if I'm supposed to be here or not. So you, someone You said, are. You are. Okay. You weren't. So they put me here. Okay. And I thought it was funny if we had four judges and the score is 20. Okay. And, and just so everyone knows from an energy perspective, what I'm doing here is handing the baton to all these brilliant people. So from now on, going forward, Mr. AJ's in charge of Soapbox Idol. If I can interject, this is like the greatest honor of my life, probably. It means I'm genuinely loved in this community, even though I don't live here. He doesn't. He left. Not but I was like, how can I trick him to come back to every pork fest? Put him in charge of something really important that he loves. <laughs> And by in charge, I mean whatever this is. And then also while I have the opportunity for the mic, and then actually I am gracefully going to step down for the evening, I do want to let everyone know that Constance will be stepping up as the main producer of Pork Fest next year. So I, I, I tip my crown to her. I actually did have a crown, but I lost it somewhere. <laughs> and then before I take off my leave, I do want to say I'm really uh, sad, Aria, that you are facing prison. I think that's a travesty. I think it's ridiculous. And um, yeah, I'm just sorry. And I hope you know that a lot of people will be thinking about it. And it sucks. And likewise to Mr. Kaufman there at the end of the table, you know, the, the government's a bully. And it's so evident because I don't know who was here for the NBC thing last night, but they were talking about their process and how they really I think have come to at least gently embrace the ideas because they spent time with us and they realized that there's, there's value in allowing people to be themselves. But what they talked about is that everyone who is here has an origin story because something happened to you that you had to go seek answers for. And so part of the origin story for many free staters is kind of how the government hurt them. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is there is safety in numbers. And so the more of us come to this clarion call and come here to this beacon, the safer we all are. There are not enough of us to be able to stop these travesties yet. So these people are heroes because they go ahead of us and they take the hard knocks and it's a shitty, shitty part of doing this. So please give them all a round of applause and then let's have some fun. So I know I'm not judging, but I believe that rant is 20 out of 20. <laughs> I think it was too long. Right? All right, so and it was <laughs> way too nice. <laughs> God, if you come up here and be that nice, you are not getting a high score from me. All right. Uh, like negative 20? Uh, negative so let's 20. finish grading Justin, yeah, though. Right. I mean, that's going to be difficult. Okay, back to Justin. Okay, first of all, like, at, I would say at us next time, but you did. So, like, fuck yourself for that. But I, I actually have been talking about this a lot. I prefer the rants to be passionate. I don't want to hear a fucking five-minute dissertation on economics or the 18th century and how it's relevant today. I don't, I don't fucking care about that. The point of this is to get up here and say something exciting, inspire some people, do something awesome. And Justin at least gets that, but the rant kind of sucked. But the message was good. So 10 out of 20 for me. Sorry. Uh, good message. Uh, Should have been longer, but passionate, and I like that, and I want to see more of that. So I have a confession. I've ever never actually came in here for soapbox item before. Oh god, you never Boo! <laughs> Boo! Remember, so, you guys are like the Roman yeah. jury, okay? Get loud, get angry, get yeah. So I am learning as I go, but I just had somebody tell me that they're super proud that I or super happy that I ran this without like grabbing the mic and then I grabbed the mic. So I might be a little like biased right now. Um, anyway, I 
think that I would. I love the energy of this crowd, and um, I'm I'm gonna give them a 13. All right. Next up, I have Mitch in the cowboy hat. Let's see what he's got for us. That's better. Hi, I'm Mitch Mitchell, and I'm going to say some shit that will piss you off again, and hopefully I won't lose to a fucking child, Jeremy. So listen, this is more angled at your libertarian conservative who's religious, has some old school morals, good base pedo shit. Um, so uh, you're all concerned about two big things that are very important. Young men not stepping up into society and being actual men, and inflation. And what's the worst kind of inflation? It's not your dollar being devalued, that sucks, but infinite inflation happens when you can't buy a product. Can't buy a gun, infinite price, that's inflation. At the same time, young men don't get out of their basement because they don't see a reason why. Like, what the fuck would they get out of the basement for anyway? You can't buy things you want. We should solve this, getting these young men back into their masculinity, back into society, the same way we built the railroads, with blowjobs, by legalizing prostitution, okay? So, yeah, let's think about it, all right? What happens, thank you, thank you. What happens when you say, you know what? You can't get laid by paying 50 bucks to a toothless chick down the road um, in a certain tent, an RV up the hill. That makes guys who are without scruples more likely to lie to a young woman and pretend to give a shit about anything about it or get laid. So if you had prostitution, you would filter out guys who just want to fuck with your head to get in your panties. That's all the women and some gay guys, I guess. Whatever. So look, after my last rant, there's a lot of very unfair rumors that I was a misogynist who hated women. Um, I guess calling them bitches who make crotch spawn got a little inflammatory and was bad communication. I am not that kind of misogynist. I'm the kind of misogynist who's in favor of women, who's pro-sex work. I am pro-prostitution. I am prostitute. Is anyone else? Is anyone else? I have one prostitute. He is prostitute. He is prostitute. He is prostitute. Is anyone else? Stay on your feet. If you're prostitute, get back on your feet and stay there, you fucks. Stay it with me. I am. Prostitute! I'm out! Well, you definitely had the passion, right? Like, it's hard to say you didn't. It, yeah. Right, yeah, you're done. You're off. I, I think that's the first time I've ever heard anyone characterize prostitution in that regard. I spent like the first minute or so wondering what the fuck your rant was really about. And then I, then I was shocked. Like, okay, he's just ranting about prostitutes and the legalization of sex work. There's not really much to, to like weigh in and criticize there. And it was, again, very passionate. I did feel like it was a little forced at times. Like, maybe the subject of prostitution shouldn't inspire that much passion. But it was still really good. <laughs> So I'm going to say uh, 16 out of 20. I have nothing clever to say. I apologize. You had a lot of energy. I think prostitution should be legal. I'm not sure that I follow your premise completely, but that's OK. Um, so what, railroads, I'm, I'm gonna go railroads 14. were built by blowjobs. What, what is about the premise is so hard to understand? <laughs> like, this is very simple. Uh, um, I'm not sure that legalizing prostitution gets dudes out of their basement. Oh. Yeah. I uh, think there's, there's, I think that uh, porn keeps them there pretty freely. The porn they're choosing because they don't have the prostitutes. I want the prostitutes uh. to be able to do their work, no doubt. So I loved uh, both. I loved everything about the. Uh, yeah, you got something. No, uh, uh, so I loved everything about, uh, you know, like the vibe and everything. Like, I don't like it when, even if it's a good rant, when I feel like the person is just like, they practice too much. And like any dude who gets up like holding that drink and uh, having that backpack on, I'm like, this dude like kind of knew what he was going to say and figured it out. Uh, and I lo so I really like that. Um, and I mean, it's honestly kind of scary, uh, you know, getting, getting a libertarian crowd in particular to engage in call and response can be quite hard. And you managed to do it. And so I would just hope that you love all ethnicities equally. <laughs> it's a little, you know? So, um, uh, and uh, uh, I will, just as the, I, I do this, uh, 
you know, there is a Republican here who actually introduced a bill to legalize all prostitution. And that's not something you see Republicans do too often. So people sometimes say, you know, we're getting corrupted by the Republicans, but there is a Republican who introduced a bill to, to legalize uh, prostitution. did not uh, go very far. But, uh, hey, that's how you started. Um, uh, uh, however, you did also blame me for this child thing. What is this myth? What is this myth? It's fake news. Anyway, it was very good. I'm giving you a 15. Thank you. All right. Solid score, Mitch. Lovely to have you back on stage as always. Next, we're going to bring up the man who I believe ran Comedy Night and is very funny of his own right, um, Bill Barger, the giant of Porkfest. Do you really need that box? Should we move the box to the floor? Or uh, I'm deducting points for the next train. How many of you consider yourselves free staters? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck the free state project. Fuck the free state movement. I'm from here. And you guys are a bunch of arrogant assholes. <laughs> At least you know it. Okay, so seriously, you're a bunch of arrogant assholes. You come here like, what? Well, the Free State Project, it's so great, we're gonna move to New Hampshire, it's the best state ever. You guys picked New Hampshire because of the culture, because of the live free or die mentality, and because of the people here, right? And then you come here, and you're like, we're not gonna talk to anybody but ourselves. We're only gonna talk to other libertarians. Yeah. Fuck you, yeah. fuck you. You know what, then you do this whole thing, thank a Free Stater. Thank a free state. You got here seven years ago, and you're going to thank a free stater for how free New Hampshire is? You didn't build this from scratch. Fuck you. <laughs> you didn't build this shit from scratch. This has been, this, live free or die came from like the 1800s. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Go back to whatever communist country you came from. This, you don't get any credit for this. You want to defeat, you want to defeat Zandra Rice Hawkins, right? She's putting out all this propaganda about the free staters are parasites, they're horrible people, they're here to change the New Hampshire way of life. Well, you don't talk to anybody else, you're here to advance some agenda that you don't explain to anybody else, maybe she's gonna fucking make more progress than you are with your 20,000 people. You know what's better than 20,000 people? 1.4 million people because the granite staters believe in live free or die. Go talk to them. I'm just saying. You know what, also, the whole arrogant thing, thank a free stater, you know what's better than thanking a free stater? And by the way, I'm glad you guys are here. I love the Free State Project. I'm glad you guys found me. I'm glad I found you. There's so many people that I love who I've met in the past couple years. But you know what's better than thank a free stater? Thank a fucking granite stater. Thank a granite stater you see out there embodying the values that you actually want. You came to New Hampshire because of the people in New Hampshire. Thank a granite stater that's the kind of person you want to be around. That's what we should be doing. And, and gratitude is a lot more attractive than arrogance. That's my rant. Live free or die. Move to New Hampshire. Yeah. Well, I'm oh. timing. Jeremy, I'm, I'm timing. Okay. Oh, okay. Ask him then. He went about two minutes. Nobody has gone over really? three yet. We're, we're very fast here. Okay. Look, right. the judging criteria is your own. If you want to penalize people for going short, that's fine. But I think... No, no. I'm fine with, with, with short. Oh, that's good. No. All right. I just, yeah, I mean, a, size Bill, doesn't matter. Bill is really short, so that's fine. <laughs> um, oh, crap. I was going to tell you, I was going to give you an extra point if you could grab a rafter before you got down. Would you like to come back up and try? That, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Can you grab? Grab it. Oh, right. no, grab it. Uh, so, so now I've got questions. Uh, words mean things. That was you tapped it. Just saying. All right, Bill, fine. Bill, are you going to be around when we take down the banner tomorrow? Because I suddenly have a lot more points available. No, I, I do think we should thank the Granite Staters for keeping New Hampshire as free as it is. Uh, I think we, I think we also need to thank a free stater because we made major changes to our lives to get here. Um, our lives are way better too, so you know we get that. Thanks. So I'm gonna give you 15. All right. But I'm serious here, about the banner. Here's, um, you know, 
the thing is, right, if I appreciate that rant, I'm thanking a free stater. <laughs> and it, sure, but what, but what, it, I mean, and I'm, I obviously can't argue with you uh, because you don't have a microphone and I'm not going to give you one, uh, but the, uh, you know, what is it, you know, obviously, no, 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 but no, this won't get Ooh, you points. Wow. AJ, jo AJ, you're secure. I'm, I'm from They're here. also security. You're also security. I don't no, know Carla. No. If, I, if I, I have to defend myself. I've been the here the stairs. longest, and I know Carla more than once shot people because they wouldn't get off the stage. I, you know what? I, I think Bill ended but his the water quickly we enough that I, we, can, we can give him back some of his time minutes. here. No, no, but we're not. No, there's not. There's okay, not we're not. We're, okay, not we're, we're not going to have a back and forth, actually. Sorry, that's the that's the name. If you had a couple jokes, man, you could come back up here. But is 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 you said let's do this? I don't know. We don't need it to be hostile in here, but there's no responses to the judges. That's not. We don't. That's not part of the event. Yes, that's how it's always. That's the event's always done that way. There's no responses. I've responded to you before. Well, they, they occasionally yeah, they yell things well back, but customarily, yeah, we, uh, they, they say their piece, they get off the stage, and the judges give their feedback, usually. <laughs> so, yeah. So, look, everyone's, everyone's for uh, making friends with natives, and I think Bill's uh, and, and making the natives like uh, the, 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 the Free State brand. I don't even like the term, you know, native. I mean, what does this even mean? A third of the people that live in New Hampshire weren't born here. So what do we even mean by native? I've already been here in New Hampshire longer than plenty of people. So, and if Granite Stater just means anyone who's here currently, <laughs> then there's plenty of them I have a problem with. <laughs> and so it sounds like you just mean Granite Stater should mean Free Stater, which I guess is an interesting marketing proposal. But this idea that we should thank a Granite Stater instead of a Free Stater, honestly, I don't completely buy it. Part of the thank a Free Stater point is getting Granite Staters the people who do care about making New Hampshire. And so I guess if Grant Stater means something, they're saying, hey, we don't like the, you know, we want New Hampshire to be maybe take some of the things that it had in the past or, or, or do some things differently. But like, we are a lot of the ones doing that. And that whole, you know, we want to be normalizing ourselves. So I, I think the message is good about getting out there and don't be arrogant. I do agree with that. But this Jeremy, idea we that we got a lot of people be, on the list. Yeah. Can we? All right, fine, we're done. Okay. All right, fuck it. I don't want to rush you too much, but uh, like. Uh, 12. Like, I don't love it. Like, I don't love it. More. I'm actually relieved because I was sitting here, I was going to lead my you know, remarks off by pointing out that no one had been booed yet, and so we were going to get that opportunity here as I spoke, because if you hated what he had to say, you're really going to hate what I have to say. <laughs> now, you mentioned that, you know, libertarians can be very insular, and I, I see that a lot. I have a lot of people tell me things like they could never date someone who isn't a libertarian, and I don't know how the hell you could possibly date a libertarian without wanting to strangle them every day. <laughs> and there is, a lot of, there is a lot of that in the community of people only associating with other uh, libertarians, but that's, that's on a small individual level. On, on the macroscopic level, you're just fucking wrong, man. The Zandra Hawkins in particular was invited to Liberty Forum, I believe this year. If it wasn't this year, it was last year. We've invited these people, these, these free state haters to our events. They've been invited to the Porcupine Freedom Fest before. We're not refusing to engage with them. They're refusing to engage with us. That's not our fault. So for that, I mean, for simply being like, like the premise of your rant being factually incorrect, I'm giving you five out of 20. Yes, yes, open the, yes. That is she's, a previous winner. She's the best. Got five best judge. That's so good. That, what a great score. You're, what a great score. Your booze will get me through the night. Thank you. Yeah, keep it going. Yeah, let's go. All right. Next up from the great, not really, state of Connecticut, <laughs> Rhode Island. Rhode That's Island. a shithole state, AJ. Two shithole states. People don't talk about Two that. Two shithole states. Yes. <laughs> Ohio doesn't exist. We've been over this. All right, Mr. Pat Ford, local region rep to the LNC. For those of you here, members of the Libertarian Party, here it is. First time, I expect nothing but your best, Mr. Coffin. Listen, I'm fucking exhausted. Not because I... Let's talk and do it a little more forward. All right, how's that? I'm fucking exhausted. Bad knee. Bad fucking knee. Deal with it. All right? So anyway, I'm fucking exhausted. Not because I'm spending 
getting three hours of sleep night with the greatest people on earth. I'm fucking exhausted because, as aforementioned, I come from a shithole called Rhode Island, the anti-New Hampshire. We just ended our state legislature season. I'm fucking exhausted, all right? Because after five years of trying, we can't end solitary confinement in our state. If Rhode Island was a nation, we would be in violation of that hell spawn United Nations Human Rights Accords. We put people in a box for 23 and a half fucking days, six days a week, 23 hours the other day, with an hour of time outside. I'm fucking exhausted because we have something called LEABOR, which is the Law Enforcement Officer's Bill of Rights. This year, a young man was shot by a police officer, almost killed. The police officer was driving an unregistered vehicle with an open carry and an unlicensed gun. All at the creation and breaking the laws of his own state. He was found not guilty, despite nearly killing the guy at pinpoint range, given his money back for the lost salary with interest. I'm fucking furious and exhausted because I live in a state where if you're found, found on a probation violation, guilty or not, you're automatically remanded to the state's prison. And a minimum of 15 days, in reality, two months before you get a hearing and even get a chance at bail, even if you're not guilty, even if it's not even a violent crime. I'm fucking exhausted that I live in a place where small quantities of narcotics are considered an automatic felony with minimum sentencing. So I have a favor to ask everyone today. Start out slow. But I'm going to ask you to work up, kind of like gym, right? Going to the gym? I'm going to ask people to do one thing a day to end the state. Start out slow. Petition, testify, call talk radio with a, a truly libertarian philosophical message. Get in the grill of your state representative from wherever hell spawn place you're from. Step, step it up to maybe two or three times. Get involved with a mutual aid organization that does not take money from any government and is completely volunteer driven. Testify. Work on behalf of folks who have less than us. Work on behalf of folks from another nation who might soon find, if I heard today properly, themselves as the recipient of bombs for a war on drugs that we created. One thing a day to end the state. If a couple of us do it, it could be a revolution. If all of us start doing it, we can end this fucking mess. Thank you. We're still not coming up on that four minutes. I'm loving this. So, yeah, look, there's no question if, if more people brought it like Pat did, <laughs> we could end it. Um, problem is, there's not so many Pats. In Rhode Island, there might only be one, in fact. Might be one in the entire place. Uh, because it is the anti-New Hampshire, as you said, you know, and it's like, you're saying you're exhausted, you're exhausted, you're exhausted. It's like, you know, you've got a nail in your forehead. Am I allowed to tell you to take it out? <laughs> uh, you know, I I'm not trying, you know, I'm sympathetic, of course, uh, you know, to everything, you know, to everything you're saying. And I think the message is very good of, you know, doing something, finding something you can do every day. So I'm gonna, overall, I'm gonna give it a 11. Ooh, that's harsh. So you got heckled by the crowd at the beginning and that, like that's, you're never off to a good start when that happens. But I do appreciate that you like actually recovered and were able to make something about it. But you kept saying you're exhausted and while repetition is good, I don't fucking care that you're exhausted. Everyone here is exhausted. It's been a long week. It's been a fantastic week, but we've been partying hard. We're all tired. That said, you weren't talking about being physically exhausted, but being tired of your state. And as Jeremy points out, right, like there's a really simple remedy to this, which is to leave there and come here. So like, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. It, it's like, uh, yeah, I get it. I don't want to hear about how much your state sucks, though, when we're here and the Free State Project is like, hey, your state sucks. Come here and help make this state better. So I got to give you a 10 out of 20 on that one, but it was good, and I did like the repetition. So thank you for the rant. All right, so that's, that, that leaves me, and, and you, you, know, you got two low scores, so I have no real incentive to give you a high one. However, no, you're the nice judge. You're no, allowed, no, you're no, actually, no. I, oh, whoa. Wait, wait, I'm going to be nice. I'm okay, going to be nice. Okay. I want your scores to be I would like to, I would like to acknowledge that Pat 
didn't get on the soapbox because he has bad knees, and you guys were booing him for that. So come on, guys. Like, we're, we need more compassion, right? Like, like yeah, yeah. Awesome! I'm getting food. All right, Pat. What's up? Oh. Pat does not want compassion. All right. Well, anyway, you, you, yeah, I agree that that rant would be great anywhere except New Hampshire, so you get 12. Mm. Harsh okay. judges, although, love you, Pat. Good work. Thank you for coming up. Next to the stage, I think, is a bit of an odd act, but we're going to see how it goes. I'd like to bring up Mr. Michael here. You should hold the knife while you do this. So what's the time here, AJ? Ah, uh, he cracks. He just cracks. I'm He's sorry? cracking. He's smiling. He's smiling? Yeah. <laughs> he can't hold it in, guys. He's losing it. He's losing it. <laughs> Does anybody have a hook? Is what? All right, everybody, that was Mr. Michael Myers. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I got to speak first on this one. Okay. Uh, well. <laughs> You should have held the knife while you did it. You gotta hold the knife while we're judging you. You gotta at least menace us, right? Hold, take the knife. Thank, thank you. Is that so much to ask? Oh <laughs> that said, <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Like the federal government expects me to turn myself in Tuesday, so if you kill me, they're your problem. So. <laughs> That's it. You didn't hold the knife during the rant, man. And so I, one out of ten. Wait, the one, no, 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 don't put me. The one fucking thing he could have done, the one fucking thing he could have done, he didn't do it. Really? <laughs> you never need to defend your score. As a judge, you are perfect in every way. Thank you, Every Jeremy. number that has ever been uttered out of your mouth. <laughs> so, so the comedy here. Okay, I'm changing mine. Yeah, Five yeah. Ten. I mean, the comedy is great, but this is the least menacing and the least <laughs> ranty, Michael, I've ever seen. So I'm going with a zero. <laughs> so I think it says something, uh, you know, about persuasion that a man can just get up there and, and breathe in a microphone and stare at you. <laughs> And you're oddly attracted to him. <laughs> <laughs>
Freakishly so. What are you doing after this? I would like to 69 you, sir, but I'm going to give you a 13. <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to give away who's under that mask, but the other night at the fire, he was walking around in the exact same costume, and I told another one of the Porkfest attendees, oh, yeah, no, he's one of the most normal people here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he looked at me, mention. and he says, oh, he's in a Michael Myers mask. I'm like, I swear to you. He's possibly the most normal, <laughs> like the closest thing to, to being able to fit in with regular society out there. And I don't know how and, it happened. And he was homeschooled, so what is What an incredible you? performance. I also forgot to mention my apologies to anyone out there on LSD or shrooms. Yes, he is dressed like Michael Myers, and he did just stand there for several minutes. You did not imagine that. <laughs> All right, next uh, rancher, let's go. Our next rancher comes to us from a far warmer place, from the state of Florida, which typically ends up pretty high on the Cato list. It is Marta Bueno. Hello, everyone. Um, this is my first rant ever, and I don't really like public speaking, but I had to get up here because I am exhausted. I, if you don't know, um, I left the Libertarian Party last year because I was tired of this, of this fighting between us, of who's the most libertarian. You know what? I wasn't born libertarian. And out there, we have a real world where we're all fighting this state that is coming after us. And we have these horrible things in our lives. Our children are being indoctrinated. We have Ross Ulbricht in jail. We can't smoke a plant for our health because our government said no. And so we're all here fighting with each other when we should be coming together and we should be somewhat. Sorry guys, but you know what? I love all of you guys. I was so sad to leave the Libertarian Party because I miss this. I need this, this community. And I think we all do. And I'm up here ranting because I really hate the Libertarian Purity Test. Nobody was born this way. Uh, we all become this because our government oppresses us to the point where we have to show up, right? And so let's all show up. Let's stop hating on each other. In New Hampshire, in Florida, anywhere you can. I ran for office because I believe in this movement. I ran as a libertarian and I was kicked out by this nasty behavior. And I just want you guys to know that I want to come back. Please let's stop being purity, puritanical about it. Let's just all... Remember that the state is the one that we need to fight, not each other. Thank you. Who is it? You're up. Oh, I'm up? Yeah. Who right. wants to go no. first? Oh. I don't like going first. Huh? Well, occasionally you're going to have to. Huh? Sorry. So. Please go first. I'm going first. I'll do it. Um, so... Hmm. That's, that's, that's tough. I mean, because I sympathize with you greatly. I don't like infighting either. That's why they said I was the nice one. Um, but I also think that New Hampshire, you know, you, you, wanna, you want people to do the same thing in Florida that you ask them to do in New Hampshire, and that's just not possible. So we're going to have to deduct some points for that. I mean, you are at the Free State Project's Porcupine Freedom Festival, so I'll go with 14. Yeah, so, uh, um, the, you know, this, this exhausted, you know, this exhausted stuff. Are you exhausted of it? No, yeah, I am. <laughs> Although I would never say that, so I'm not. Uh, I don't know, there's just a lot of stuff here that's, and I, look, I'm not saying that you can't be here if you identify as being part of the left, but a lot of this stuff I just associate with the left, I just, I, I don't like it. I'm not a blank slatist, and I don't care. You're just like, you're living in a dream world, and you're frustrated because you're living in a dream world, and you're asking other people to embrace your dream world, and like, I'm just not gonna do it. And you know, we, we definitely fight with each other some here, there's no doubting that, but I actually think we fight with each other less here than just about libertarians do anywhere else in the world, to be honest with you. And some of that fighting's just the, the you know, nature of having a healthy community, but the truth is you fight less when you're winning. 
Anyone who's been a part of a team would know that, that the clubhouse is healthier when the team is winning. And so, you know, maybe you're fighting all the time because you're losing. And so that's just something to consider. Uh, I do agree, though, that the enemy is the state and we shouldn't fight each other. And a uh, decent stage presence and et cetera. So I'm going to give, but I, yeah, I just don't like it overall. I'm giving it an eight. So obviously you mentioned infighting a lot, and I mean, that, that's true, that exists a lot on social media, right? Like, put down your fucking phone. Out here in the real world, libertarians don't really tend to fight that much. Outside of the Libertarian Party National, outside of the Libertarian Party National Convention, which I mean, that's just a bunch, of, they were, that's what you do at these fucking things, right? Is you fight with each other and you bicker about Robert's Rules of Order. I mean, that, that's what they do at these things. I but love you, Robert's Rules of Order. Yeah, all you really have to do, if, you, if you're sick of the infighting uh, among libertarians, is put down your fucking phone and get back into the real world because Twitter isn't the real world. And that, that infighting, it exists solely on the internet. And you mentioned, you know, you said, I'm up here ranting. Were you, though, or were you just talking? Because I, I didn't feel any passion. It was, it was a good speech that you gave, right? And it was good, and you had a lot of really good points, but it wasn't passionate. You weren't ranting. But it was good, so I'm going to give you 13 out of 20. But also put down the phone, people, because the internet is toxic, it's killing us. We're better off without it. Never. Cry it from my cold, dead hands. I was gonna say, how are they gonna find us? <laughs> the same way people have been finding each other for tens of thousands of years. No, not other people. Okay. How are they gonna find the Free to be, State Project? Is that Tinder? And to be fair, what, among <laughs> others. And to be fair, I said put down the internet. I mean specifically social media. Yeah, I just like don't know Facebook anything right. yeah, that happened sorry. before 2012. All right, we're ready to go. The next ranter uh, was in the AJ, vault. you're in charge. You don't ask. The point <sighs> is you're in charge. And we're supposed to like res pretend we respect you like you actually are in charge. Yeah, however, Jeremy, you have but my don't permission let it to slip continue. Jeremy, I know for a fact you respect me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he called you daddy. What? <laughs> <laughs> Up next, former member of the school board in Croydon, is that right? No? No, not really. <laughs> but she fought really hard to uh, <laughs> fix the education system in Croydon. Jody Underwood. Oh, I thought it was going to be a two-footed step. Jody, I'm moving this chair behind you. I think it was here to help people get up, so I'm just letting you know so you don't step off onto it. I'm, right, is, oh, is thank you. That looks like I wouldn't step on it. I think that would fall in. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I'll move it out of your way then. Thank you, though. Yeah. I Did you guys know we don't have any insurance at all? <laughs> That's not true. I'm sure we have general liability insurance. All right, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> all right, ready? I might get a nosebleed up here. Oh, my God. How many of you know about the Croydon budget battle from last year? <laughs> The rest of you, go buy the book, RV1, tomorrow morning, till I leave. <laughs> I'm not going to tell that story today. No, I'm, but I am going to tell you something about Croydon. So I was on the school board, AJ. Um, I was chair of the school board a, a year ago, and at the end of the year, I asked my administration to, uh, to give us the scores, how the kids are doing. I want to know. I, I care about the achievement of the kids. They, they apparently don't. And they, they brought this beautiful report. They really did. It's colored and charts, and you can read it, and you can see very, very clearly that more than half the kids are not performing at proficiency. And they proudly present this data, because they got the data, and isn't this cool? So, so you know, over time, we asked, so what are you going to do about it? And the administration really has nothing. The superintendent was like, we, it just takes time. Could you do it for a million dollars, Mr. Superintendent? I'm sorry, Dr. Superintendent? And, and he said no, that he couldn't. He did not know how to do it. So fast forward a year. Oh, might I add that all the kids that aren't doing well are special ed. Like, it's sort of a reverse thing. If they don't pass a test, they give them an IEP. There's something wrong with that. So fast forward a year. I'm no longer on the school board. I did serve for 12 years on the Croydon School Board. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and I asked again for the, uh, well, actually, no, I'm not on the board, but the board now has the habit of asking for the data, which they never did before. Make sure your school boards ask for this data. 
Um, and again, a beautiful report, and it looks great, and it, I mean, it doesn't look great. Um, what am I saying? I was getting into the principles mode. <laughs> um, and, and again, you know, the data is just really bad. I mean, two thirds of the kids are not performing at proficient. And, they, and we're talking about 28 kids in a school with two teachers and three aides and some, you know, specials and reading specialists. And they don't know, I mean, ask any parent who homeschools, how do you teach a kid to read? They know. So these guys don't know how to do it. So the school board this year asked them, so what are you going to do about it? And, uh, well, we'll get a better teacher. And, we'll, I mean, they, and the principal actually admitted. She said, we don't know how to teach kids to read. I, I couldn't believe it. I went home and listened to the recording, and, and she actually said it. So I, I'm actually going to write about this. But then they asked her why this had happened, right? And she blamed it on a lot of things, but a couple of them included COVID. I mean, we're like three years out of COVID, but she really harped on that. And I have to tell you, about six months ago, I did some research. I actually looked at data. I, don't, I doubt she did, um, uh, other than her own beautiful charts, of course. Um, and oh, thank you. And um, so I looked at New Hampshire data uh, for the state test, and I looked at the NAEP data for New Hampshire. And I got to tell you, the downward trend started well before COVID. I want you all to know that. It continued after COVID, but straight like linear, it's just astonishing. Um, and everybody, you're reading in the mainstream media everywhere that they're, they're still doing badly and they're not you know, catching up after COVID, they, they took a drop. So um, I, I know I am gonna write about this um, locally, about my results that I found, and it's real data. Um, I'm also going to expose the schools that are not teaching kids to read. And I want to know how many of you are going to do this. Go to your school boards. You know, I, I look out and most people like yawn when I talk about this stuff. And I get angry, you know. Um, and this is your tax dollars. And kids are not learning to read by the time they graduate. Graduate. They're not even reading at an eighth grade level. And we are the ones that are going to have to do something about it. And time's up. So, sorry about that, but for future ranters, if you plow past the time limit, there's just a, you know, a penalty for it. You can finish your thoughts. I'm sorry about that. No, I get, I get points off. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, Jody, I love you, but uh, we may not uh, know how to teach kids to read. We may not know how to teach adults how to rant either. Uh, uh, I know. Well, no, that's why you need me, because I'm here to give you the unvarnished truth. Look, Jody has brilliant points. Jody's a brilliant woman. I love everything she has to say. I think you should go to RV1 and buy her books, because that is some very, very good content that, that they put out. It's, they're really good. These are books you can put uh, on your, your uh, you put them in your bathroom. They're short, they're easy to read, they're great gifts. So, I mean, who doesn't love reading about policy while they're uh, in the bathroom? <laughs> I don't know where I'm going right now. The point is, your books are great. It wasn't a great rant. And I'm giving you a, I'm, I want to keep giving out numbers I haven't given yet for fun. And you're getting a nine. Yeah. That wasn't a rant. Learn. That's why you're in the audience. All right. All right. What, what, what do you think, Aria? Uh, yeah, Jody, uh, you're a difficult one to assess, right? Because, like, you're fucking legendary. It's like, what, what, what can I say to criticize you for, uh, for all this? Everyone knows you, right? And now you're writing books, and it's fantastic. I love everything that you do, right? And, and I love everything that you had to say here. But Jeremy is also right, and that wasn't really right. There was a lot of data, a lot of important data that would be good for you to put forward in front of a school board. I would add that caveat that if you want to go to your school board to do this shit, do it in New Hampshire. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. You're going to hear that a lot from all of us, but just be aware. Uh, do it in New Hampshire. Otherwise, you are mostly wasting your time. Of course, you did do it here in New Hampshire. Yes. No, you that I will. You did not. You have no idea what you did. We and have a I we have a, ma a path forward to yeah. this other places. It's amazing. Yeah, and it, and it was fantastic. But I, you know, it wasn't a rest. So I'm going to 13 out of 20. Yeah, the crowd would just sit up here like, 2020, 20, 20, I love everyone. Why didn't you give everyone a perfect score? 
or a zero. I think there's some out there where get everybody a zero, right? Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. My high is actually a 15 right Yeah, now. no child left behind, right? I guess I've got to pass you. Oh, you, uh, my high is a 15 as well. We're, we're just comparing scores. I mean, it, it's relevant for this, 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 this. I also agree it wasn't a rant. It was becoming a rant, and then you ran out of time. So if you could give those statistics and really rant and come from your heart, I would give you a higher number. But I also love kids, and I love what you do, so I'll go 14. Thank you, Jody. All right, next, we have coming to the stage, I believe the defending champion. <laughs> Called out a number of times in earlier rants here from obviously bitter human beings. Um, accused of being a child whose mother wrote his rant. I don't know whether or not his mother wrote his rant, but I do know that he had his bar mitzvah here at Porkfest, so he is in fact a man. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Jefferson. So just to clear up some confusion, this isn't part of my rant, but I wrote my goddamn speech last year. <laughs> it was not my mother, and she did not write it this year either. It's still me. <laughs> so this year, I turned 14, and the government finally allowed me to get a job, even though I could work at 13, 12, even 10 years old. And I wanted to work because when I turned 16 get a driver's license, I want to buy a car debt-free. I, <laughs> I also want to buy property so I can build a house debt-free. And this takes lots of money. And so I need to start working early, but the government said I need a late start and turn 14 first. And when I did for turn 14, most places wouldn't hire at that age because we can only work three hours a day during the week. But I'm homeschooled. The government has stolen thousands of potential dollars from me because of dumb reasons that don't even apply to me, and that makes me so fucking pissed off. <laughs> Is that it? Are you done? Yeah, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson, uh, we've, we've, Jeremy has asked this of other, of other speeches. Could you get down so that you cannot respond, apparently? Yeah. If you want to wait here, you can, but. So that was I obviously know, awesome. Right? I've yelled back at Jeremy after getting bad scores before, but yeah. So that was obviously awesome. You make a good point, right? Society in general, they treat people as though you, you magically acquire your rights the day you turn 18. And before that, you're, if you're lucky, you might incrementally be granted rights as you get older. You know, you mentioned getting a license. I mean, realistically, you have the right to drive from the moment your feet are old enough to reach the, that you're big enough for your feet to reach the pedal. But the government likes its rules and its regulation is fucked up. And people who are under the age of 18, they're treated as though they have no rights. The principle that you deal with in particular is judge, jury, and executioner. The entire system is set up to deny you your rights. All the while, the school systems in the United States promise you you have rights as, as they employ these systems that are designed to deny you those rights. That said, you did win last year, and it was a really good rant. But does your mother know you use language like that, sir? You are grounded. It was a good rant, though, but you won last year, and I don't want you to win again this year. Uh, I'm corrupt, so if you didn't know that, now you do. So I'm giving you uh, 12 out of 20. Well, All right. I don't care. I, uh, I want to congratulate you on your first rant as an adult. <laughs> so, as I said earlier, I didn't watch last year, so I have no necessary bias against you. Um, well, I, I have children in your age range, and I have watched them suffer from this. So you're getting the mom, you know, the mom heart here. So I have to confess that. But I also really like leverage. And if you're 14, you're old enough to look into that. So like, come and talk to me about leverage and why. Although it's great to be debt free, it's also great to use other people's money to make wealth. Um, 
so I'll give you a 17. Oh, I was confused. I thought I forgot. I got, yeah, I got that one. <laughs> I started. That's why I, was, I thought it was my turn. <laughs> I wasn't trying to jump you. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I said the, my first thing. Uh, I mean, look, talking about um, child labor in front of me is like cheating. Um, <laughs> I, I was, I was, uh, I mean, I am going to judge you as an adult. Actually, last year, I really tried to dock you points for being a child because I thought people liked it. But guys, you got to remember, this is an adult, this is an adult up here ranting. You know, so you've got to judge him that way. So he's a much shittier adult than you're giving him credit for. <laughs> like, you're like, this is a really precocious kid, so I like him. But no, this is a really shitty adult. He's 14. He doesn't know anything. He knows more than most 14-year-olds. Almost all of them, probably. Let me, let me be clear. I'm not trying to drag them. But now we're judging them by a different standard. Uh, and um, uh, I was actually going to say, it was, you know, it was a little bit of a soft ramp, but you kind of built up to it at the end. Uh, and you, did, uh, you, did have, you had good energy. Uh, and it was a, a great topic and a good point. Uh, and so I'm giving you a 14. Thank you, Jefferson. Um, so... For those of you ranters that I do have I'll signed, give you another point if you can touch the rafters. <laughs> <laughs> for, those of you, for those of you ranters that, that, that I do have signed up, um, this was kind of thrown together last minute. Obviously, I was put in charge of this like six hours ago. If, if y'all could try to coalesce over here, particularly those of you that I've just met today, I have a bunch of first names written down here, so it's hard for me to track where everyone is. Um, up next, a man who has me drive him food from Cincinnati every time I come up here, Patrick Bender. All right, Mayor of Manchester here, you know, long time listener. It's my ninth pork fest, was my first rant, so please uh, bear with me. I am big mad. You might have heard that there are some controversies at this pork fest. Well, yeah, I, I made a list of grievances, and you know, excuse me for using the list, but. Uh, there's politicians here? Yeah. Fuck that. Mainstream media? Yeah, you know who you are. Gun-free zones. Uh, naked people? Bands and protests of the bands? Uh, you know, at Porkfest, guys, really? All this stuff? Oh, my gosh, you know. So I, I'm big mad. You have a right to be big, big mad. And, uh, but I don't think you should be mad at these events. You should be mad at the assholes running these events. These nefarious actors... They want nothing but the worst for all of you. Want nothing but the worst for Pork Fest. So I'm going to name names and take some inventory here. I'm going to start with Mikey, that troll back there. Don't be swayed by him volunteering at the load up or putting wayfinding signs or doing free tours or just being a nice guy. That is a cover. He is not your fucking friend. All right. How about Carla Garrett? That you might think she's a monster because she didn't ask your question at RFK, but just wait until you get to know her. She's not your fucking friend. And how about Dennis Pratt? Dennis fucking Pratt. Don't even get me started. He is not your fucking friend. So you're coming to Pork Fest and you're thinking that, oh, out there's the, the big bad state and that's my enemy. No, your enemy's right here at Pork Fest. I'm first. Yes. All right. So, Patrick, love you. I just gave up so much of my life and earning potential to run this event, and I've watched how much Dennis put his heart and soul in this, and I believe in property rights, and you guys are applauding somebody who's actually banned and here watching a pork fest in sp uh, space that we paid for, or we'll pay for tomorrow. I, 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 no, no. You, you, you guys are assuming that we owe you the entire story to each one of you every single day. Do you know how many signs? Listen, I'm, I have the story and I've shared it and I've been told I don't have the story. So I'll rant right now. We put our heart and soul into this and they don't respect it, they don't deserve it, they shouldn't be here, so you get a zero.
the nice judge has now given out the most zeros. Uh, well, first of all, I love the big rant energy. That is what I want. That was some big rant energy, regardless of the topic. That's exactly that's exactly what I want. I actually think, Constance, you were missing the point a little bit. I actually think, although I think Patrick has contributed to the problem at times himself, uh, but he uh, he was actually, uh, I think, if anything, I think maybe I'm not getting it, but I thought there was some 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 shaming involved with the people who are doing all of the fighting, not uh, not an endorsing of the fighting. I think it was a bit, you know, um, uh, that it was a bit uh, sort of I don't know, satirical is the right word. So uh, so. Uh, I, I thought that was the point, and I actually, I, I thought it was actually a good point, although you, in some ways you were also ranting about yourself, because I think you've done some of the things that you're talking about. Uh, and I loved the, I loved the throwback. I thought that was great. The, that's, uh, that was uh, from Dennis's rants in, in the past, I thought that was a funny twist on it. And I would have liked it actually to see, I, I would have liked to see that be a bit more developed. It's rare that I say, there's, there's a, 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 an interesting point there. Um, so I'm going to give it uh, 13. I obviously have to agree with Jeremy here. Uh, that's the exact sort of energy I want when I want people to be passionate and speaking on their subject. I, I want them to like scream out, not necessarily scream out, but be passionate and energetic with it. And you absolutely brought that, Patrick. And I, I'm not going to wade here into the whole controversy surrounding the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I, I've done that endlessly on the radio, and you know that, that's what libertarians do when we're bored. And it, it says a lot that we even fight about these sorts of things, that we have a festival to fight about. As you get bigger and bigger, you're going to get more people fighting about pettier and pettier things. These things are going to happen. But ultimately, I'm, I'm glad to see that we can put those things together, and wh whether a band or not, the things have become amicable enough and agreeable enough that Mikey is allowed to be here at the event and isn't being physically removed or anything like that. So the, the, this, these are good, positive developments as far as I can tell. But So I appreciated your rant. I like the energy, and I like the subject. I, I especially love it when people turn our expectations on the head. A few years ago, we had this guy pretending to be an FBI agent, saying, you know, we, we already did this. We came for Jeremy Kaufman. We came from all these people, and you guys are LARPing out here in the woods, and it was fucking fantastic. So I love it when people come with that sort of facetious energy. I'm giving you 16 out of 20. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. All right. Next up is going to be from the state of Massachusetts, but moving here soon. Next week, apparently. Last year, she gave a rant about how she was going to wait until her boyfriend told her to move, and then she broke up with that boyfriend. <laughs> I heard a little bit of this at the fire the other night, what, what she's going to rant about, and I got to be honest, this, this is the one that might get us all canceled. Welcome to the stage, Masha. to hear me? Okay. So I have a um, misogyny medley. I apologize in advance. Um, I think I know how we can solve the age of consent. Uh, women are never adults. Um, you, you don't have curves. You have fat rolls. He isn't ghosting you. He is choosing not to text you back and you don't need a fancy term for when, for when people don't want to talk to you. He is not gaslighting you. Maybe you're actually being crazy. You don't have this powerful, big personality that's just too much for some people to handle. It's just you are annoying, and you're not hot enough to compensate for being annoying. Um, what I said at the fire was that unless you're like held down at gunpoint, it's not rape. Um, if you are, cannot be responsible for your own decision when you're drunk, maybe you should have a male chaperone so you never end, end up in those circumstances and we can go all the way back to trial, like you, like you guys like to say. Um, where did all the good men go? They went with the women that were not complaining about men. Um, um, <laughs> The women you call pick me's have most likely been picked and for reasons you don't like. Um, we, we ask to be accepted into male spaces 
but we come in and form HR as soon as there are enough of us because we want to nag and see what offends us and how things should be different when we're, on, when we're around. And I think that overall we just gas each other up too much and that's not healthy in the long, in the long run. Um, and to go back to the comment about men watching porn in basements, maybe if we were more pleasant and nicer to be around and did not create HR out of every space, then maybe men would come out of the basements. I don't know. I've never seen so many single men clapping at once. Uh, look, I, I, I think uh, there's an interesting point there. It's certainly one you know, I'm sympathetic to in terms of the consistency of this stuff. I'm not, I guess I'm not exactly clear. Uh, I'm going to eat this, but I'm not, what's, the, what's the libertarian point here? I guess it's just about this sort of social double standard you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, the rant, uh, it was the, the, the jokes were very good. The stage energy just a little bit, a little bit lower than I would like in a, in a good round. Yep. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. You're in, I have you on my scoreboard. You're an eight. And that's out of 20, not 10. So that might not be the scale you're used to. Yeah. So uh, uh, anyway, uh, you are getting a, I did like it. Uh, you're getting a 15. So speaking of turning things on their heads, right, that, that, that was unexpected. Very enjoyable. Uh, you got a really good reaction from the crowd, too. But as Jeremy points out, like, it was just a lot of dudes clapping about you saying misogynistic things. So it's like, man, I, I, don't, I don't really know how to feel about this. It, the rant itself wasn't particularly exciting, re regardless of what points you made, without you know, even speaking to the points that you made. It wasn't particularly exciting or exhilarating, but, but it was good. And... But on the other hand, you are a woman, right? So I got to take off points for that. Uh, that's what I was going to say. So I'm going to go with uh, 10 out of 20. Yeah, she's still not going to fuck you, so stop. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about that one. That was just like a whole lot of stereotypes, right? I mean, I know you guys like that, and you're happy about that, but uh, I mean, I know so many women who aren't like that. I know so many guys who aren't like that, but you know, it's like, eh, I don't know. But at the same time, uh, I want to ask, did you get permission to be up here? Because <laughs> if you didn't, I have to give another zero. But if you Ryan, did, Ryan, I will did, give you a Ryan, 12. Does she have permission to be here? Unequivocally. All right, okay. so then she gets a 12. At least you're consistent. What was the score? All right. Uh, I'm, we've got a bunch of names on the list. I'm going to ask the judges if we can be just a little quicker. Um, Sorry, boys. Um, you can ask. I can ask. <laughs> I've asked. Next on the list, um, wife of, I believe many people are calling him like the tyrant of Porkfest or something. Most people are getting upset. <laughs> Carol Pratt. Are you guys enjoying Porkfest? What are, I, have you enjoyed the talks here in this venue? This menu here? What about the one-on-one -on -one up there? What about the, all the stuff that's going on the, in the campground? Is it fun? All right. All right. Awesome. So, Dennis, I don't think, he may be here by now, but he wasn't here when I got up for this rant because he was sleeping. He was physically and emotionally drained from this event. Um, and I'm going to be reading this because I'm going to get a little bit emotional and it'll be easier for me to do. So, if he were here, I wouldn't be standing here. I don't think he, he may have shown up already. I don't know. Anyway, Dennis has a thick skin. He knows that criticism comes with the territory of organizing a festival for the most disagreeable people in the world. All right. He rants to me. That's my contribution to the Free State Project. 
Um, and then he shrugs it off and he keeps going. But without, and he keeps going because he, he cares so much about the success of this movement. But without him telling me that it hurts, I have no doubt that it does. Why, how could it not? So, I was inspired to rant. I wasn't going to rant. I heard Justin's rant. I don't know where Justin is, but I've heard Justin's rant. And I'm thinking, really? You're calling Dennis out by name to criticize him for a decision that wasn't even his, ranting at him incessantly online. When is the last time you gave him some credit? Why are the few assholes in New Hampshire, not just Justin, so loud? Why are people who pour their heart and soul into supporting the mission of the Free State Project vilified and abused? Whoever is organizing Pork Fest has to make decisions that some people would like and some will hate. They should be made for the purpose of um, attracting the largest, largest possible number of people and making the festival as welcoming as possible for our visitors. That's what Dennis tried to do, and that's what Constance will try to do. I'm not sucking up, I'm just telling it like it is. For her sake, please remember that she will be making decisions intended to benefit us all by making the most welcoming festival for the most potential new movers as possible. And for Dennis's sake, and for the sake of the success of the Free State Project, which needs dedicated, passionate, creative, intelligent, hardworking volunteers, stop being an asshole and burning them out. And yes, it's this negativity that burns them out. And thank, and okay, and thank you to all of you who have been supportive. There are many, many, many of you. My the per, next person in line, Alu, is one of them. There are uh, and 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 um, thank you. That's it. Sorry. <laughs> Carol, I told Dennis recently uh, in some, some DM that, you know, I don't envy the position that he's in, having to please 3,000 libertarians. It's an impossible task, right? And similarly, I don't envy the position that you're in, of having to be there to console him when 3,000 libertarians can't stop fighting each other long enough to do, to do anything. But it, do, it, it does come with the territory, and maybe it shouldn't. Right, yeah. Yeah, right, I understand, yeah. No, no, no. And maybe it shouldn't come with the territory, and, and there's plenty of arguments to be made for that, but it does, right? I, I would love to be able to go online and do my radio show without people going, oh my God, a freaking tranny, right? These are things that just come with the territory, and you just gotta fucking deal with it. Like, pull, pull, your, pull your big boy pants on and deal with it. But, and Dennis has done that, to his credit, other, other than arbitrarily banning people, but that, that, I, don't, I, I honestly don't wanna get into that. Uh, but I do appreciate everything you said here, and I appreciate everything that Dennis has done. I don't want to suggest otherwise. Uh, 16 out of 20 for me. <laughs> Mostly because you did get very passionate during that, and like that's exactly what I want. So, I'm not biased in this one, guys. <laughs> not at all. So. I'm terribly biased. Yeah, yeah. I was lying. Um, so uh, the same way I was biased against against Patrick. So, you know, I mean, it's out there. I put it in multiple channels why the bannings happened. You can find it. I'm not going to tell each of you individually. I agree with Carol, uh, you know, there, there's reasons, there's decisions. I don't expect you all to like me. I'm going to do my best. And, uh, and I, I think, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and we're going to grow Liberty in, in New Hampshire, and I'm super, super grateful for Dennis for building it back to this. And I, I know there's debate of how much he did, but I saw it firsthand, and, uh, and I'm going to gonna say the only... Oh, I already forgot why I was taking points off, but you get an 18. All right, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, I mean, look, I, I, I obviously very much agree with the core point, and it's an important one. When we're part of a group, we have to make decisions. We, you know, we, we want to be a team. It means you don't get your way 100% of the time, and so you have to be people. You know, we have to mean we have to trust the people uh, you know, that, that are, are making those decisions and not want to argue every, every little thing. Um, 
some room for, you know, uh, you, you, the energy was like sort of there, uh, but I can tell it is hard for you to get up there and be a rancher, but you did a good, you, you know, been at the same time you were doing it. Um, and, and that said though, it is my job uh, to, uh, in the same way that I, I gave the lowest score to the 13 year old kid, if you get a little bit too 14. cloying for me, a little too red meaty, I actually dock you. Because I like it when someone really gets the crowd going or something that's harder. Uh, so I'm going to give you a 14. All right. Thank you, Carol. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Up next, we have a man who I think most of you have met at this point in time. He got that site right at the front, so I think he said hello to most of you. His name is Alu Axum. Alo can do his whole book in four minutes, just, you know, so you guys know. He can read a whole book in four minutes, so. Yeah, I do talk fast as fuck. And I'm not your fucking friend. And I'm ready to be robbed a third year in a row, Jeremy, looking at you. I'm ready. Zero. So, over the past week, since ForkFest, I've heard a lot of uh, really bad words, actually. Some really disturbing language from a lot of you people. And a lot of the ranters tonight, most of them have potty mouths, um, especially Pratt and uh, Carla, I'm sure, ranted. A lot of really bad words, actually, and I'm trying to clean up my act. Most of you know I have a baby. My baby's here, and he's hearing a lot of offensive terms. My wife is here. There are kids in the crowd. There are like 500 kids on the playground. And a lot of you people should get a bar of soap. That's what my mom would do if she were here, actually, with some of the language you guys use. Um, and honestly, it's pretty disturbing, and this fucking shit needs to end. Um, some, some, I'm being serious, um, this, it's fucked up. Um, a lot of the terms that I've heard over the past week by people that should really know better. Um, I've heard the term government, public school, taxation, police, dollars, Department of Defense. I've heard some really weird shit, terms that you guys should know better than to use. And, and you are corrupting the youth, all of you. Like I said, you're not my fucking friends, I guess. Thanks, Patrick. Um, Instead of those terms, just for those of you who are noobs or not real libertarians, I see a few in the crowd. <laughs> Instead of using public school, use the correct term. It's not public, doesn't mean anything. Use government school or government indoctrination center. Instead of media, it's fucking propaganda. <laughs> Instead of dollar, maybe use fiat, fake money, fraudulent reserve note. That's what FRN stands for, the fraudulent reserve note. Um, instead of, you know, uh, foreign peacekeeping missions as foreign wars and on and on and on. I have a whole, a whole list here and on libertyblock.com I have like another hundred terms of terms that you shouldn't use, but I'm sure all the real libertarians have read the articles on libertyblock.com, right? Yeah, yeah. So, thank you. So instead of those terms, we need to start switching the language and to be serious, Orwell said in 1984 years ago, language is such a big key in the culture. If we use certain terms, like if we don't have a term bad, we have good or ungood or double plus good or whatever the hell he said. The well, culture is so important. If we don't have certain words or do use certain words, that like the public good, public benefit, when the government steals shit from you and they say it's for public benefit, it's not public, it's for government. And government is a euphemism for politicians. So for those sco uh, constitutional scholars, I see Zephyr in the crowd. For those constitutional scholars, lawyers, you know the Fifth Amendment and uh, eminent domain, it says you can take things for the public good. That's a euphemism for politicians' good, which is a euphemism for the politicians can fucking steal your shit if they say that they would benefit from it. So if they like your shit, they can steal it, and that's what's wrong with it. Instead of saying public, never say the word public ever again, because nothing is public. Like we said, property rights. Not to start drama again, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, but just don't use certain words. Don't use taxation, use extortion. Don't use police, use gangsters. They're just a gang wearing blue with silver badges. So thank you, that's my rant, and fucking rob me again, I dare you. All right. Okay. Oh, my first. We're trying to keep it shorter so we can get more people. Look, it's a very, it's a, uh, it's a very brave, uh, to get up here and to give the first pro-grooming rant of, of anyone. Uh, you know, you're saying that you're, the youths are getting corrupted because we're using the wrong terms. Uh, you know, we've got to make sure we use the right terms for our ideology. No, it's a very good point. We want people, that's a joke. We want people to be stepping into our frame, into our view of the world. 
and the way that we use our language is very relevant uh, to that. And I think that's a very good point. So I am going, and I uh, and good rant. Uh, I am going to give you a uh, thirteen. Uh, well, to Alu's credit, he can talk extremely quickly, and I mean, he, he can be extremely passionate. So that Alu that we just saw, that was like carefully, deliberately controlled Alu, trying not to overwhelm people by speaking quickly. And I, and I, I appreciate that. Right? I've heard you be passionate, and, and I've heard you give these sorts of speeches, and that was absolutely wonderful. Of course, you're absolutely right. The language is very important. The reason that people make excuses for taxation instead of just calling it theft is ultimately because of language, and they take issue with the fact that you call it theft. So you make a lot of really good points, and I appreciated that you did not say four million words in the span of 10 seconds. And so I, I, I think I'm going to give you a 20. Thank you. Oh. All right, so I'm, I, like I said, I'm just figuring this out, right? But I can, like, counteract him with a really high score because I'm nice. Um, but I was going to say the same thing. Thanks for taking my words again. Um, I've welcome. never heard a Lou talk so slowly, <laughs> but also very passionately. And I love that his topic was, was, was started by, like, how we treat our children and use the correct terms. I love that. Um, the only... The only thing I would take off for is like, I mean, no, I mean, he's talking about here and here's libertarian. So I was going to say I take, might take off one for when you were talking to like, you know, the people out and about, but he's talking about pork fest. So in my opinion, that's a solid 20. So Jeremy, with all that said, do you want to rob him and now reduce your score? Hey, Constance, uh, just so I know how far, how, when, when is our hard stop on this? Okay, so I'm gonna eight o'clock. Be a producer for a second. I just have to. Get I know it. it's scheduled till eight, but like. And no, no, we we have another thing to do. We packed that schedule. We're gonna okay. burn this porcupine. Okay, so it's at eight. Yeah. All right, guys. I, so I gotta, I gotta run. All right, <laughs> some people are unfortunately gonna have to get cut. I apologize. Mark, you're next. I haven't met Mark, so I don't have a fancy introduction to it. Just met him before now, but he's next. He's coming up. Let's hear from him. My letter to the ATF, the NFA, and Connecticut. Dear Connecticut, fuck you. You have no right to tell me what I can and cannot own to defend myself, my children, my loved ones, or my community. Dear Connecticut, fuck you. You have no right to tell me how many rounds I can carry in my magazine for self-defense. feel like an idiot carrying 10-round mags around here. Dear Connecticut, fuck you. You have no right to tell me where I can or cannot defend myself. Gun-free zones suck. Dear Connecticut, fuck you. You have no right to tell me who can wear body armor or limit my ability to purchase it for myself or my children's backpack. Dear ATF, fuck you. You have no right to tell me how I can or cannot hold my firearm on my shoulder, on my wrist, or that I can't have a certain number of arbitrary, scary features on my AR. Dear ATF, fuck you. You have no right to make me register anything. It's none of your fucking business what I own. Good citizens should have the same exact firearms as the police and military. Dear NFA, fuck you. You have no right to tell me how long my barrel can or cannot be. Dear NFA, fuck you. You have no right to tell me I have to register a suppressor to protect my ears. So Connecticut, ATF, NFA, fuck you! I'm first, I'm first again. Well, definitely, all right, I'm learning as I go. Definitely lots of energy, lots of 
crowd. Uh, I 100% agree. I mean, other than like their government, the military and police should have no arms because they shouldn't be here. Um, but you know, that might be a little extreme for everyone. But uh, so I'm, I'm gonna go with a 19. Yeah, all right, I have a question for everyone. What do you do with a poor partner? What do you say to them? <laughs> Fuck you. You gotta end Connecticut, my man, but that was a fucking great rant. Very great rant, and I urge you to make the final fuck you to Connecticut, but it was a very good rant, and I'm giving you a 16. Can I suggest that, you know, as you're looking to cut people, you just cut all the people who are gonna bitch about other states? Like, we, we, we can eliminate all of that by just, No, let them you know, get it out. Can... Let them get it out. Let them, yeah. They need it. So, I mean, this, a lot of this was more bitching about Connecticut. I get it. Connecticut sucks. Move, New, New, move to New Hampshire. Move on. Next. Uh, 10 out of 20. All right. Up next is another man who I don't have much of an intro for because, sorry, just met him. But this is Jim Babb. Here we go. Oh, no. I apologize. You're Jim Babb. What was your name? Okay, Jim, you're up. Sorry. No, go. You're good. My apologies. Hello. Hey, I've been coming to Porkfest since 2007. Great to be here. I just want to say that gun-free zones are gay. And, and, but not in a good way. Gun-free zones are for slaves, and they have no business being at Porkfest. The recent RFK uh, event was an embarrassment for everyone involved. In, instead, he could have come here like, I like the guy, he's got great positions. He could have come here, won us over. Instead of winning over Free Staters, he wanted to disarm them. Instead of winning New Hampshire's secessionists, he indicated that he might have to attack them. Literally, he did. He said, he said strategic ambiguity, I'm not gonna answer that question. Like, yeah, I'll decide later if I need to kill you. And he, got, he still got applause. Instead of winning Ross Albrecht supporters, the politician merely promised to look into it if elected. Politician promises. Okay, but people say, oh, oh, he's, but he's hunted by the CIA and, 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 and Big Pharma and oh, he's, it's, he's, everybody wants to kill him. Like, like two magnetometers are gonna stop a deep state assassination plot at Porkfest? I mean, get real. It's nothing but security theater. Okay, so a typical pork fest is the safest place in the world. This is the key feature of our event. Uh, are we so why would we support the narrative that a gun-free zone is, it's, you can do that if safety is extra important. Go ahead and disarm people. That's, why would we go along with that narrative? That's complete bullshit. So let's let future politicians meet us in our house on our terms. Let them face uncomfortable questions unfiltered. Caving in on principles to suck up to celebrities is a bad look. Thank you. James, that was great. Uh, humorous and fun, and I, enjoy, I always love a good laugh. It was passionate. I enjoyed that as well. And I mean, you basically, have, I mean, you stood up there and you read my fucking Twitter for the last two weeks. So, <laughs> um, that said, you know, I agree with you on the RFK thing and the gun free zone thing, but like the, the, the crowd was here. Like, people came to fucking see him. I hate it. I wish they hadn't come to see them, but they did. They submitted to it. And like, I, I can't blame that on the Porcupine Freedom Fest organizers that they provided an event and a lot of libertarians were like, yeah, sure, I'll disarm and go see this politician to tell me a bunch of lies and then, and then lie to myself about what he actually said regarding Ross Ulbricht. I, I wish I could give you higher, uh, but I can't. And I gave Alu a 20 earlier, so I'm gonna give you a 20. Yes. Woo! Yeah, look, RFK sucks. Oh, I keep forgetting. I keep thinking I go after. I'm quiet, but I'm not that quiet. All right, so. Shut up! Oh, you, you stepped off the stage. So, it's not about him. 
It's about the people we found. I've had people come up to me and tell me they didn't even attend the event, but they didn't know about Porkfest until RFK started talking about it. We used him. He didn't use us. I'm sorry some of you didn't like the fact that we provided a place where he felt more secure. I get it. He's wrong. He's going to lie. He's a politician. I don't care about RFK. I care about the people that found us and are going to finally feel, find their home. So I give you an eight. Good energy. Yeah, RFK sucks. That's not the point. They all suck. Vivek is not going to save you. RFK isn't going to save you. DeSantis, Trump, none of these people are going to save you. Alu said it great in the NBC Boston documentary. None of these people are going to save you. That's not the point. The point is, what do we get? What do we get? I think about it a little bit differently than Constance, so I think getting these people into our sphere that we can maybe turn into more committed libertarians is great. But you don't understand, man. Like, the mountain is coming to Muhammad, okay? These people want to come to us. We are where the power, they are demonstrating our own power in the state. Yeah, if you see one of us thinking that one of these guys is our savior and they're falling for this stuff, yeah. Call them out. Don't let our people do that. But if we understand what's happening here, that we can get way more out of it than they're getting out of us. We can get way more out of it. And I think that is the right way to see it. Um, uh, but I, I mean, I get where people are coming from here. Anyway, 10. All right. Up next, uh, maybe the only more controversial person than Jeremy Kaufman at <laughs> this event, Carlin. How many of you had kids in public schools? Raise your hands. Government Raise schools. your hands, public schools. Government. You all hate your children. If you are sending your kids to public schools, you hate your children, and I'm going to prove it to you. So earlier, Jody was talking about the reading rates in Croydon. The reading rates aren't just shit in Croydon. The reading rates are shit all over the country. According to the nation's report card, 36% of students graduate from high school are proficient in reading. But that's not even as good as it gets. 33% of the kids graduating from high school in this country are proficient in writing. And 26% of them are proficient in math, in math, in math. You want to know why? Because they're not even teaching math anymore. They're teaching anti-racist crazy math at all different levels of mathematics education. I have the director of the mathematics program at the Philadelphia School District talking about how they are teaching tree equity in math class. Tree equity. Do you know what tree equity is? It's discussions about why some areas of Philadelphia have more trees than other areas of Philadelphia. If we go, if we go down the road to Cambridge, Massachusetts, I have their teacher training program where they are training elementary school teachers to teach anti-racist math starting in the first grade. If you, if you are sending your kids to public school, you hate your kids. And, and just in case you think this is just in like big urban areas, well, there, there, there is national data on this. So a group called Parents Defending Education has been working on investigating every single school district in the country to find out which schools are allowing your children as young as five years old to change their gender and their pronouns at school without telling their parents. Now, listen, I don't care if you're trans, I don't care if you're not binary, I don't care if you're playing with your gender or expression or your haircut or any of those things. What I do have a problem with is when young girls in fifth grade, let's say, are going to an after school club and told that they're not really a girl because they're acting like a tomboy, because they don't like the color pink, they don't like wearing dresses, they're quite literally going to school and the school is telling them, guess what, honey, you're not really a girl. You might be a boy, you might be non-binary. They're doing this without telling the parents what they're doing. Over 11,000 school districts in the country right now have policies policies in their handbooks that say, we will not tell your parents if you start using a different name and gender at school. There is a family in Long Island that is currently suing the school district because they were calling her their fifth grade daughter by a different name and different pronouns for six months. And the daughter got so screwed up by this that she ended up in the school psychologist's office having suicidal thoughts. That is when the parents found out about it. That's not the only case. We 
We have a woman right here at this event who had her teenage daughter transitioned by the schools. There are parents out in Colorado suing for the same thing. And guess what? On that list of 11,000 school districts that Parents Defending Ed put together, there are 11 of those school districts right here in New Hampshire because Chris Sununu would rather suck the dick of the teachers union than do anything productive in the job in which he has been placed. It is time to admit that the public schools are a failing proposition. We need to make defunding public education one of our top issues moving forward because if you capture the minds of the youth, you capture the future. There is no excuse to not be asking every single presidential candidate, will you defund the Department of Education at every single event they do in New Hampshire? And if we aren't doing that, I don't know what we're doing here. You hate your kids, you know that? All right, good one. Can I first? Who's first? I'm first? Okay, all right. Great energy, good topic. I hate it when people tell people that they hate their kids because they don't know. So I'm gonna say 16. That's yeah, all right. That's yeah, all I right. also, I look, I love this topic. Public schools are enemy number, government schools are enemy. Thank you, thank you. Let's all reinforce that in each other. Let's all take that moment every time we say public schools and correct ourselves. I know I just did, that's what I was doing. I just did it to myself uh, and say government schools is what I was saying. I wrote down government schools and I still said public. It's hard to untrain ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, very good. They are, they are enemy number one, especially in terms of what we're doing here. They are enemy number one. They are the biggest power center that is contrary to what we are doing. They are the majority of the state budget, the schools are the majority of the state budget, of all of it, okay? So this is where the energy needs to be. This is the enemy that we need to defeat to take it to the next level, and I love anything that is pushing us in their direction. Like Constance, I don't love the hate, although I get you know, going past the sale as a persuasion technique as well. So I'm giving you a 17. So you didn't have a lot of energy, and that's awesome, but I, I think it says a lot that you, that you, come, you did not talk at all about the biggest issue here, which, yes, it's, it's messed up for schools to hide things from parents, right? But the real fucking question here, the one that you did not address is, why isn't the child comfortable telling the parents this themselves? That's the heart of this issue here. The school is saying, look, you don't feel comfortable telling your parents that you want to transition or that you don't feel like a girl or whatever. We're not going to rat you out to them. But why the fuck isn't the child comfortable enough to say that to their parents in the first place? Why don't they feel like their parents will love them regardless? That's the heart of the issue here. The child should tell their parents, not the school. I, I, I absolutely agree with that. But the problem here is the child isn't comfortable because the child fears the reaction. And nothing was said about that. So yes, the public schools are in the wrong here, but equally in the wrong here is, is this notion that it, it, we can just gloss over the fact that the child isn't comfortable going to with their parents to the, with this serious life-changing issue in the first place. But I did like the energy and I did like what you had to say and you know, fuck the, fuck the government schools, absolutely, and fuck everything that they do. So I'm giving you 15 out of 20. All right. These next two are gonna be real quick. I think we've only got time for two more. Up next, the man who's been feeding you free pancakes all week. The man in charge of the freedom. Shit, I wrote it down and I can't even read it. Maybe he can tell you. It's Tony Olson. We are in a toxic relationship with government. We know we're being abused, but we, we stay because we continue to believe that we can change this, we can change this abusive spouse. We worship Ayn Rand, but few are willing to follow Atlas Shrugged's example and simply leave. There is always a next frontier where freedom awaits the brave. We can do better. I don't, yeah, uh, that, uh, 
I don't disagree, but that was not really a rant, nor did you use much of your time, although I guess I appreciate the last part. I am going to give you a three. Yeah, I was still kind of waiting on you to get like into your topic. Uh, I, I was still trying to formulate my thoughts about what you were ranting about and what you were trying to get at, and then you, you set the microphone down. So I'm uh, super confused. I'm um, going to just skirt the middle here and say 10 out of 20, because uh, what was that? I appreciate that we're almost out of time, so you're really short. Um, so wasn't much energy. I'll, I'll go with 10 as well. All right. Judges with how fast that was, do you think we can get two more in or just one more? Two, we, we. I like two more. Two more. Elijah is next, our friend from Rhode Island. He came and cooked chili on the field. Get to know him, he's a great guy. I'm exhausted, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fucking ran for governor this year, right? And it was fucking exhausting. I couldn't find enough volunteers, couldn't get enough donations. Libertarians just didn't fucking show up. I got called a Nazi because I put Carlin in one of my promo videos. I don't even know who the fuck you are. You're just, uh -huh. The only thing I know about you is that you make based ass videos about the lockdown. That's the only thing I, I was stealing IP and I get called a Nazi. And guys, all right. Like, Every, then I come to Pork Fest. I get fucking sunburned like crazy yesterday. They pours all day. They have fucking Democrats and Republicans here. Oh my fucking. Oh, wait, wait. You guys aren't enjoying this rant? Is that because it's like using you as an emotional tampon? Stop fucking doing this shit to other libertarians. Stop complaining and do the fucking work. Now, Greg, now let, let me tell you something, guys. Libertarians, you guys are the best people. You don't have to do anything. Anything that you do to end the state is charity, right? It's, it's amazing that we do anything. But if you're going to do the work, stop fucking complaining about it. Just fucking stop and do the work. Stop making excuses and make moves. If you can't find volunteers, maybe you should work on yourself to be more inspirational to get volunteers on your side. You can't get fucking donations, fucking Get on the phone and make calls. You can't get votes, knock on doors. Do the fucking work. Stop bitching. I mean, sort of, but the two aren't mutually exclusive, right? I think about my sister, who is a single mother, and like she, she clearly gets off on taking on enormous amounts of work and then bitching about it, right? I know a lot of people who do this. One of my coworkers, he, he loves volunteering to do things and then spending the entire time bitching about it. Like, this is, this is a some people's hobby, right? Uh, but I'm going to give you an 11 out of 20. I'm going to keep it short and just basically leave it at that. It, it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I like, oh. Hey. I keep thinking I go off to her. I just did a bunch. So I like what you had to say, and I appreciate the energy. I'm going to give you an 18. <laughs> and I'm also exhausted, and not from running the festival, but all this decision making is too much. Please let me just run a festival next year and not do this. I, oh. I, I did like this one, and I suppose if there's one message we cannot hear them too much of, it's like whine less and do more. But in this case, I'm going to whine about the fact that I heard this rant several times already tonight, and that means I didn't want to hear it the third time quite as much, and so you're getting a 14 despite it otherwise being a very good rant. He's exhausted from yeah. this rant. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. All right. Our final rant of the night. The only person that the FSB told me I have to give a spot to tonight, his name is Ryan George, and I'll let him give his, his rant without much more of an introduction than that. Get on the box. Get on the box. Hello. I'd like to thank everyone for coming up on stage. You're all fearless. If you could hold it a little more in front of you to hear. Yeah? All right. I want to say thank you to all the men and women up here and that young kid who are fearless to come up here and speak in front of you guys. You guys are, you guys are brutal. I love it. I need you guys. I'm a fifth generation New Hampshireite. My family's been waiting for you since the Civil War. 
That wasn't funny. We're dying here. We're dying. My 17-year-old daughter, I got five daughters, by the way. She's six foot three. The most beautiful red hair you've ever seen in your entire life. She'd stare at you, and you were scared shitless because she was so pure of heart. My family is the Frank Orr family, which means true heart. And we've been in New Hampshire for a long time holding space for you guys to get here. I've been waiting for the Army to show up. We got the opportunity that we have never had since my family came here. There's a war going on. There's a war of consciousness. There's a war of ignorance. There's a war of sleeping little children in adult bodies. You guys are fat. You're drunk. You're a bunch of drug addicts, okay? You go to the doctor and you do what they tell you because they're there to kill you, by the way. Because they killed my 17-year-old six weeks ago. It's the second attempt they made on her and they got her the second time. I've been fighting for my life, for all my children to get to the point where they can have children. She was given the vaccine and she was dead within a week. The first time, was the MMR when she was two, two years old. She died in my arms, but I was medically trained. I was ready. I knew what to do. I got a bathtub full of water and I put all the ice in that bathtub and I brought her back to life. I did CPR and my daughter was alive. I got a big bag of, tr big trash bag of ice and I brought her to the hospital. And they fucking wanted me to wait in the waiting room. I fucking broke the door down at the hospital and got my daughter in the hospital because she was dying from the MMR vaccine that she had three hours before. There's a war on the people. And it's not the government that's the problem, it's you guys. Because you're weak, and you're ignorant, and you're afraid. And I say that with love. Because I was afraid too. Until they finally, one of my daughters. We got this guy who came here. I know you don't like him, but he's talking about it. And you know what? Let's get him and Trump on the fucking stage and talk about it. Our children are dying. Every fucking libertarian, join the Democratic Party, get this fucking guy on stage so we can have him and Trump going at it and talk about it. I don't give a shit who wins, but guess what? 50 cents on every dollar in this state comes from the feds. And I can prove it, I have firsthand knowledge. And you know when you go into a court and you feel that shit in your stomach? It's called cognitive dissidence because you're walking into a fucking gunfight with a pocket knife and you guys think you know what you're fucking doing. And you don't, because I go in a courtroom with 25 cops and we spend four hours going back and forth with the judge. And you know the problem? It's the executive branch. It's the prosecutors. It's the cops. It's the ones who are inciting you to have a fight because you guys are so busy looking to fucking mix it up, which is cool and I like that and that's why you guys are here. But let's get someone in the White House who has the pedigree to at least have the conversation and stop this shit so your kids and my kids don't have to go in a courtroom and fight for themselves for years on end. You know, one last thing. When my daughter, Sophie, was seven, I had her, I put all my effort into her. She became autistic because of this. It took me, it took me six years to get her to put her clothes in her dresser. And you know what happened a month later? The fucking cop showed up at my house in the middle of the night when I was sleeping with my four daughters in bed and they took me away. And people say, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. And I'm like, don't be sorry for my loss. Be sorry that my daughter's protector was taken away from her seven years ago. And I spent the last seven years fighting in a courtroom to protect my daughters. I almost lost one to the gender manipulation, my oldest. Her name was Jewel, she's the most beautiful woman, girl you've ever seen, woman now. And she called herself Augustus Caesar because she was trying to be the man of the house because I wasn't there. Hormone therapy. Blockers, hormone blockers, testosterone. She was 14 fucking years old. You know what? I broke my restraining order. I went to my daughter and I told her that she wasn't me and to cut that shit out and she stopped. But what did they do? They gave the vaccine to all my girls and one of them died. 
you guys get together. You know, yeah, we're practicing, we're fighting with each other, we're getting our shit together, but let's get together. Let's get this guy in fucking Washington who showed up here, showed us the respect that New Hampshire's the first in the nation, because we're the first in the nation. I'm a fifth generation New Hampshireite. This is my country, and I have to put up with those other 49, and I'll do it because 50% of the money comes here, whether you guys like it or not. So let's get organized, let's get together, let's decide amongst ourselves to do something in this state of 1.3 million people and fucking take over the world because the administrative or the executive branch of the United States government is the military of the world. And we in New Hampshire, in this room of about, I don't know, 200 people actually have the power to take back the greatest force in the world by bringing consciousness that we're killing our own kids and we're eating our own young. Thank you for listening to me. And, and, and just. Well, you all about to hate me, man, because you might be a captivating guy, but I think you're completely fucking insane. I think you're completely fucking insane. And I think all of you who want to associate libertarianism with anti-vax bullshit, you can do it, but you won't get me along for the fucking ride because it is bullshit. I have a degree in physics. I've gone through the science. I have looked at it, and anyone who wants to bring the fucking facts here can get with me, and you know I'm happy to take an unpopular position when there is one. And the unpo there, this is the correct position. The vast majority of vaccines work. They save lives. I don't know what happened to your daughter, man, and I'm sorry to be harsh to you on stage like this because I am sorry. That's a terrible thing. Terrible. And You're not I'd even sober. I'd be happy You're not even fucking sober. Yeah, that, yeah. Sure, bring it, man. Let's have a factual discussion. Okay. All right, so I'm sorry that your daughter's look, dead, but look, you're not getting it from me. It's not about Zero, no counter-argument. It's not about anti -vax. Put the fucking mic it's down. It's not anti -vax. Put the Make mic me. down. Make me. This is my fucking country. It's called New Hampshire. Get him off, Constance. Get him off. These people are here to New Hampshire. Get him off. No. No. Go. Just listen. This is not Let me respond. I'm not looking for your opinion. So I'm not looking for your opinion. I'm not anti-vax. I just want now. the conversation you to be public. You said elect Robert Kennedy. No, I didn't. A discussion I about said have the discussion. Zero. Get off the stage, loser. Fuck you. Come on. You want to bring my daughter back? I'm sorry your daughter's dead. Oh, really? Dead. Just call me a loser. Yeah. Do you hear that? I'm not going to act me as to this. Like I'm not going to act me as to this. This is how we treat people. Like a loser. I wasn't looking Rangers. to compete. I was just sharing a truth. Where's Sean? No. Look at you. got Your mother? Listen, I'm also... Doesn't, if you say your daughter died because a magical god struck her out of the sky, it doesn't mean you endorse delusions. You're being aggressive. You need to stop. Stand down. Let's do it. Let's do the podcast. Let's bring the facts. Anyone, anytime. You know I'll go on any show. Yeah, yeah people you're behaving call like one. It's not the same as like being one. violent. And I'm sorry. How many times? Do, how many times do you want to say? How many? How many? How is? And it's relevant, man. You've lost control, dude. You've lost control. I'm sorry that your daughter's dead. I've said that multiple times. Nope. No. You need to step off the no. stage. Okay. Okay. That's not how we wanted this to end. We have a celebration. You also after over time. This. That was like ten minutes. Follow the fucking right. rules, loser. So, so I think that we were kind of set up here because he has a very sad story.